Network File System, or NFS. The NFS protocol was developed by Sun Microsystems, which is now Oracle, in 1984. It was built on the Open Network Computing Remote Procedure Call, ONC RPC. It has some open standards. These are RFCs 1094, 1813, 3010, 3530, 5661. So you can look those up and look at the protocol and find information. NFS was originally just a Sun Microsystems thing, and then it went to other Unix distributions, made it to things like Linux and Mac OS X, and eventually to Windows. So it's available all over the place, and it's pretty good. So in order to get NFS running, you need a couple of useful utilities. Uh, NFS-utils is a package you can install which provides NFS. You also probably want to have man pages. This is in general for everything. You want to have man pages for, well, reading the man documentation. The NFS service needs to be started after the remote procedure call service is running. If you don't have it running, bad things happen. So on a CentOS 7 machine, you want to do a system CTL start RPC bind and start that service. You also want to make sure that if you want it to start automatically at boot time, you do a systemctl enable RPC bind and make sure it's there as well. NFS should only be started after RPC. Once you have RPC running, you can do a systemctl start NFS server and get the server up and going. You can also enable that one as well to make sure it's running at boot time. Now the NFS server needs to have a list of directories it's exporting. These directories are listed in the etc exports file. So the basic format is you type in your share name. That's the directory location that you want to be exporting. And then you want to decide, well, you list who you are exporting it to. If you want to list export it to everybody, you just put a star there. And then inside the permissions, you list well, information about what permissions you're exporting it as. So if it's read-only, you do RO. If it's read-write, you do RW. If you want to do something else, you can put other permissions in there as well for the exporting. So once that's there, you can use the export FS command to actually export the directories. Usually you type in export FS space dash A to export all of your shares that are being shared in that etc exports file. You can type in the export fs command by itself to then get a listing of which directories are being exported. NFS doesn't really work well if you cannot get through the firewall. So you need to make sure you allow it to get through the firewall. So you go in there and you use the firewall cmd firewall-cmd command and you give the options you can give it the dash dash zone equals public that's actually optional you can it's just default um, but you want to do an add dash service equals rpc bind just like it's displayed here so it's dash dash add dash service equals rpc dash bind that will allow the rpc bind to get through you also want to add the nfs service through now these are both great. If you then restart your firewall, they will no longer be there. So you want to make sure you use the dash dash permanent option if you want them to be written to the firewall configuration file and be there after the firewall is rebooted. All right, you can then verify they're there. You can use the firewall dash CMD command dash dash list dash services to see which services um, are there. You can also use the firewall dash cmd space dash dash list dash all command to list all of your firewall rules. I like the bottom one better because it gives me more of a well a big picture of what's actually going on. Okay once again um, to make services available at boot time you need to make sure the system has a proper symbolic link for you to run run it. 
so each run level has a set of symbolic links. In CentOS 7, they have simplified it in earlier versions with the init before you had the system D. You had uh, these, well, seven run levels, zero through six, zero being halt, six being reboot, and one being just your basic system, three being your multi-user system, five being your GUI, and they decided to simplify this down to just a couple. So you got your, your multi-user one and your GUI one. And what happens is when you use the systemctl command with enable, it will create a symbolic link from that run levels directory over to the actual script that starts. So you just do a systemctl enable and enable your services, the RPC bind and your NFS server. When you want to mount NFS shares, and I would recommend mounting NFS shares as a test before you put it in anything like your file system table FS tab, um, you want to make sure you can mount them manually. So after the remote server has the shares exported and the NFS server is running and the firewall is out of the way, you can mount the shares. So you just type in mount the remote server's name or IP address colon the share or the directory being exported and then the mount point you want to mount it at so the directory name of the location you want to mount it to so if I had let's say a friend who was exporting his music files and I wanted to see the music files uh, assuming this is all legal music files of course he might be exporting it from myfriend.com or example.com and it might be the slash music directory and I might want to mount it into my local music directory so I might type in mount space uh, example.com colon slash music space slash local music and then it would mount up and hopefully everything would work perfectly and smoothly All right, so in addition to just being able to manually mount things, sometimes you want to have it automatically mount on boot time. This is especially important for situations where you have a machine that is getting its home directory from a server. So you can have the server exporting the slash home directory. It might be mounting the home directory from the server, and you want to then go into the etcfs tab file and, well, make sure it's mounting and there is a standard format for all of the mounted partitions you want to give it the device name the mount point the type your options the dump number and the file system check number the device is the server and the colon and the share so if you are going from example.com slash home then the mount point would then be where it's mounted to, so maybe it'd be something like slash home. The type would be NFS, and then you have your options, any options for mounting, whether or not you want to allow it to mount smoothly, or if you wanted to make sure it's got this hard, hard mounting, whether or not you want it to crash when it goes down, um, usually just defaults. And dump and file system check usually just leave zeros. Anyway, you can read all about using the FS tab file and the formatting in the man pages, which you should have because you have installed the man package. When you're troubleshooting, you want to verify that your IP address is correct. So go check a look at the IP address, make sure it's correct. Make sure the IP address you are of the server is correct. Make sure you are in the same network, things like that. Verify that the service is running. You want to make sure your services, well, the server is exporting everything, it's running. You can use netstat, you can use export fs to make sure it's exporting. Verify the firewall is on the way. You can use the firewall dash cmd space dash dash list dash all command to see what's actually being allowed through the firewall. You want to make sure that the remote server is up and you can ping things. Um, you can use tools like nmap 
you can install nmap and use that also to verify ports are available when you're scanning the remote server. So good luck with your NFS installation.